Uh, was it hot out there or was that just me? <laughs> just kidding. Um, man, what a, what a, what a fun uh, environment. Uh, the student section was great. I don't know how many showed up, but they showed up. That was obvious. So, uh, and you could tell that early. So it was awesome. And there were moments where we needed it. it was, uh, that's why coaches call timeouts. It's not always just because you make a couple buckets or whatever. That crowd gets into it, and they know what that does to the students, so uh, to our players. So, um, uh, shout out to the crowd in general, but uh, especially the student body. So that was that was great to see. But um, yeah, we got the first real game uh, out of our system, so uh, bless you. So that was good, and uh, you know we were nicked up a little bit, as you could tell. And then, and then on top of that, uh, Michi has a couple run-ins with uh, with the injury bug out there. Um, it didn't seem like knock on wood anything was too serious, but it, but he was he, it was hard for him to get back to himself. You know, before he checks out, I think we're up 14, and after that, we ended up being in a nip and tuck situation uh, the rest of the game. So uh, the good thing about that is that there were all kinds of situations that we could not uh, at practice we can't simulate. Guys had to make a couple clutch free throws. We had to foul up three at the very end of the game. That was, you know, you can try all you want at practice, and it just the guys go half speed at that. So uh, it was good to get that. We had guys play out of position because of some of the injuries, um, you know. So I commended them for that. I commended them for that. And uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, teaching tools or things that were out there, moments that are out there. So we'll get back into the lab. And we got to learn quickly because there were a lot of chances to make some some winning plays, which rarely has to do with putting the ball in the basket. It's oftentimes a block out or just being on the same page with whatever we just said in the timeout, and then 30 seconds later executing that and and uh, and, and being locked into the moment. Um, and so uh, there were a lot of those things, and I think that's what we'll take away uh, most, uh, aside from just the win. Lamont, a couple for you. Uh, first of all, how is BBV uh, Benjamin? Should he be back for the next game? Um, we'll see. It's 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 uh, day to day right now, but he's made tremendous progress from the from the time that he did it. So uh, um, it wouldn't shock me if he was available in, in some capacity for that game. But uh, so we'll see. He's he's been doing his treatment and like a champion. Um, but uh, so we'll see. And also, with him being out, did that affect y'all's offensive game plan at all, like more reliance on threes since he wasn't going to be in there to kind of, you know, control it, uh, the paint? Um, I, I mean, we, we took some threes early on. I like to shoot the three. We weren't making some of them. I, th I think some of them were the right play. And then uh, here's the problem with, with doing that. Then they go zone late in the game, <clears throat> and then we had backed off of the three, right? And then when we got open threes in the zone, which you're oftentimes going to get, we hesitated. Chico a couple times hesitated. I thought we had some good looks. Um, we got to tell these high school guys that the, 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 where the court ends. Um, it's like they, they have a hard time staying in bounds. It is because of three-point lines further. So they're used to, they're used to uh, uh, their proximity to the line and not to the out-of-bounds line. But, um, but yeah, I, I think... I think we did take a lot of threes early. I thought for the most part they were good looks. Zach got excited one time and let one go probably a little quicker than what he would have done if he could do it over again. But uh, for the most part, I thought they were pretty good looks. We didn't make some, and then we hesitated on some. And I just uh, I think you got to stay with that if that's what they're giving you. Teams are going to give you one thing or the other, and you got to just you know be ready and prepared to to, to play when it comes. Uh, Lamont, from my vantage point, it seemed like maybe early on, Gigi might have been pressing a little bit, maybe you know forcing some shots early in the game, but seemed like he found his groove uh, later on. And obviously, that you're talking about winning plays, that you know the the layup and the end one there uh, at the end. Just what did you see from him, and just how he progressed and, and grew throughout the course of the game as well? Yeah, I think I think he as well as some other guys. You know, it was a combination of didn't perform well as shooters, but also were probably a little excited and and you know I think in the first half it was Chico it was one for seven maybe uh, between Chico Michi and Gigi our numbers were not good 
<clears throat> and so uh, him specifically, certainly he wanted to, he was three for nine maybe in the first half. And so he was being active and aggressive. I want him to, but, uh, but uh, I told him the old adage that I've always known the, the equation. I wasn't a mathematician, but too many jump shots equals not enough points. I think it equals evens out that way usually. And so um, whereas you see like in the second half, Hayden Brown went out of his way to establish himself around the basket. I think it's reliable. I think when the chips fall, you can count on that to happen. And so he's got a lot to learn that way and add some things to his game. But, um, you know, he was. But then he, he began to affect the game uh, physically. And he can do that. He, he needs to do that on an everyday basis. He needs to impact. A big time tip dunk for an and one <clears throat> in a moment where we needed to put some points on the board. So that's where he's special. I think if, if he only had those things, he would be a really good basketball player. Um, but he's also a skilled guy. He's got, the game's got to slow down a little bit for him um, in terms of generating his own offense. And so, uh, but yeah. Emily, on the left. Hey, Coach. Um, when Michi so. comes off the court in that first half and NSC State goes on that run, just, you know, why was losing him so impactful for you guys in that moment? What does he bring that, you know, you, you can't replace when he's off the court? Yeah, I mean, he gets the ball, he gets the ball down the floor pretty quickly for one. Um, he's a really good creator for our team. Uh, he can get downhill, get in the paint and make, make passes in a way that you can, when you catch it, you have an advantage. I think some other guys see the pass, they can make the pass, but by the time the pass gets there, the defense is recovered enough that you don't have the advantage that you originally thought you saw. But um, yeah, that was, I think that's a big part of it on the offensive end. Um, it shouldn't affect us as much defensively, although he is a pretty good defender when he's, when he's fresh and locked in on doing that, particularly while he's guarding the ball. Um, so I think that was a big part of it, but he's a, he's a good creator. I mean, he's our, he's our point guard, and so, you know, it's like all the positions count for the same. They're all just as valuable. The center is just as valuable as the quarterback, but you just don't see as many people say, we lost the game because our center had a bad game as a center. Um, so when your quarterback or when your uh, point guard is, is, is not available or can't play the way that they want to, it oftentimes affects uh, the synergy of your team. Phil, the decision to foul when you're um, you're up three, yep. Is that um, philosophical or is that situational by you? Philosophical for me, yeah. I've been, I've, I, I, I've, I mean, you know, they've done these studies now, and so it's like six of one, half dozen of the other is what they say. But as long as I continue to do it and I don't get burned by it, I'll probably do it until I do it and lose. So. Um, not to let my secrets out, but but yeah, I, I'm a believer. I just uh, oftentimes I think of it this way: if I was on the other side with the ball, with three seconds left, would I say, "Man, I hope they foul us so we go to free throw line, make the first, miss the second, rebound it, stick back, and we'll go to overtime"? Or would I say, "I hope they let us get a shot off, some sort of shot, any shot"? I think I'd do that, and so that's why that's a big part of the reason why I do it. And again, until until it burns me. I'll stick with it, but I, I I do. It's philosophical. It's not it's not really situational for me. You mentioned Hayden a little bit, but he was kind of everywhere tonight. Twenty one points. I think you played him in the first half with two fouls. Just how does he impact winning, and how vital is he for what you want to be on this team? Man, he's a winner. He's a winner. I said it to the guys in the in the in the locker room. I I, I praised him for playing out of position. We had Zach. Davis as a freshman playing the four, he's never played the four in anything that we do, right? He's out there doing that in, in clutch situations. Hayden's playing the five. He's never played the five, really. <clears throat> so we did some different things. Um, but Hayden Brown is a winner. That's as about, as about as simple as I can put it. And that's not, that's not a knock on anyone else. I, I, I mentioned this in the locker room. I've been Fortunate, lucky enough, whatever you want to call it, I've been around a lot of winning at the highest level. And the guys whose, whose game seems like it fits right in with what I'm used to, I'm looking around and I recognize it, I can smell it, I can see what it is, it's his game. It's, he does winning things. He comes out, he takes a charge early on. He's help oriented. He blocks out when he needs to. He's, forget the plays as far as if it goes in the basket or not, right? The guy makes winning plays. He makes winning plays. He's a winner. 
And so it's good for these young guys. Some of these guys, or, or even just guys that are not as experienced, they must learn what winning is. And I can tell, I can tell them what it looks like, right? Kind of like a chef can tell me how to make some fancy French meal. Until I get in there and I mess it up and I see it and I'm involved in it, I'm not going to – it's hard for me to do it. So they get to see it firsthand. They get to guard him and, and be around it and what it's like. But he's a winner. And, and I know that if I know anything about basketball. Well, Mike, kind of like what you're saying with Hayden, when you got a guy like Michi kind of fighting through some – injuries and things like that and, and kind of gutting it out and playing what I think you ended up playing like 20, 25 minutes tonight. Uh, what does that do for the team when you've got a guy like that who is, you know, gutting it out on a night like that and, and giving you guys a, a chance to win too down the stretch? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, th he's tough. We got some, we do have some tough guys to that end and, and they're all about the team. And so Michi, here's, I'll give you, I'll tell you this. So late in the game on one of the last possessions, Michi, Michi came to me and, and said I should sub him, right? We were about to go on defense, and he knew he couldn't move the way that he needed to move on this. We were going to switch everything. They were up, we were up three. He couldn't move the way that he needed to, so he was honest. Got, you think a guy wants to pull himself out of the game in a, in that, at that point? He was honest enough to me to say our best chance is if something gets to happening that I – and I have to be called into action. I'm not capable to, of doing defensively what I really want to do. And so let's, we should probably look at something different. And so that's, that's maturity. That's a selfless guy. That's a, that, that's a teammate, honestly. Um, but yeah, he tried to fight through as much as he could. I pulled him out a couple times because I did. I just didn't think he had the pop that, that, you know, that he needed to on the defensive side of it. Hey, Coach, you got another first-year head coach um, on the other side of the bench today, Eric Martin and SC State. They brought the fight to you guys today. What did they you did. see from that team and that program? Yeah, he's, he's, he, I knew they would play hard. I've known Eric Martin for a long time. And if he's imprinted his DNA on that team at, in any which way, they're going to play hard and they're going to compete and they're going to keep coming at you. So um, he's going to do a really good job there. I'm a fan of his. I'm I'm cheering for him on every other day except for the games that we play him. So he's done a real. He's did, he'll do a really good job. Um, but uh, but yeah, they they kept coming at us. They were they their small lineup ended up being the one that was most effective for them. You know, put us in some situations defensively. Um, <clears throat> but they're scrappy. They were obviously very excited for the game. And, uh, you know, one of the easiest things to do is when you have a team with a brand new coach, he didn't get the job until like a, a, two weeks ago or something like that. Or, you know, it was late in the process. And um, a lot of times guys get down and they'll and it's hard for them to make a comeback. It is. They haven't they haven't established themselves as that type of team yet. And they did. They stayed with it. They kept coming at it. They believed and you could see they weren't they weren't going anywhere. And so uh, I commend them for, for what they did and how they played and, and how Eric Martin had those guys prepared to play. Your, your first real game, as, as you mentioned, uh, what were the emotions like for you coming into this? And there any, is there anybody who you like to talk to on, on, on game days that you had a conversation with or anything like that? Just kind of how, how was your day coming into this? Yeah, um, you know, it was, it was – I don't want to make this sound the wrong way, but it's I've done in this. I've been around basketball a long time. I get excited for any game under any circumstance. I do. I get excited to to watch the guys. I say watch to see how they're going to play, and and then if I got to push any buttons out there, you know. Honestly, my my my. Hopefully, one day I'll just come. I'll be sitting. I have front row seats. I have the best seats in the house, and I'll be there watching. And if the referee does something crazy, I'll let him know about it. That's what I aspire to be as the head coach and on game day. Um, but, yeah, it was exciting for me more to, to see what guys were going to do, how they were going to be, how they were going to respond to stuff, how excited they were going to be about this opportunity. It's a new opportunity for every single guy on our team. So, really, my excitement mainly lies in that. I didn't really talk to too many people today. I get a bunch of text messages. It's it's amazing. I'll look at my phone after this, and, and it's, a, it's surprising how many people. It was a 7 o'clock tip-off, and I'm sure there'll be 20 texts that occurred at 6.50, all right? And the people, like, it must have been on TV. They said, I'm going to send him a text. Hey, good luck. 
Um, but yeah, a bunch of texts coming in. I just try to, I go through my normal routine. I, I clear my head. I, you know, I relax. I'll sometimes watch a little more tape on the game day, but you know, usually most of the hay's in the barn. Sometimes you're unsettled on what you want to do, a specific thing that you're going back and forth between. So I'll try to clear my head and just watch a little bit more tape on the game day, but just pretty, pretty relaxed overall. Uh, you mentioned the most exciting part about this for you being seeing guys grow, kind of seeing what they do in a game. Is there anything you learned about your team tonight that you didn't know before this game that you kind of had to see at game speed? Um, I, that there's a lot of learning still out there for us. And when I say learning, I mean tangible stuff that affects winning. Uh, it's we'll go back on some things like some basics, pump faking and things like that. So just just I'm always reminded of the value of the basics. I'm always reminded of the value of the basics, especially when you have a team where where, you know, some of these guys that hasn't been emphasized in their careers for the most part. And so, um, yeah, just uh, just how much growth potential we have in terms of some of those things that that really affect whether or not you end up in the win column or the loss column. There are a lot of a lot of high majors upset by mid majors. You know, I told the guys that I said it is what it is that it's good. There'll be some good evidence for us. But at the same time, there were a lot of coaches sitting in my chair that played yesterday that are feeling a lot worse about what happened than than what we were today. And so um, they found a way to win. I felt good about that, and so we'll just continue to continue to grow. Coach, one of the guys Andrew. that seemed to be really confident tonight was uh, Jacoby Wright, especially on the offensive end and putting up most of the shots that um, making most of the shots that he put up. Um, what is it that you attribute that to? Is it the fact that maybe he's now a second-year player in college basketball? Is it the fact that maybe he played more off-ball tonight, where he played a lot of point guard last year? What do you think? Is the attributing factor to his growth? It yeah, probably a combination of those. I mean, one of the biggest things is probably just sheer uh, age. You know, it's 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 amazing what happens in 365 days for these guys. But also playing off the ball give, affords you the opportunity. If you're not a ball in hand creator, which which as many guys think they are, not that many guys were. Now they had a couple, but um, playing off the ball allows you to see the surroundings. Um, in the circumstances before the ball gets there. So you have an idea. You can't predetermine what you're going to do, but you have a pretty good idea if it's time for a quick reversal or if I'm going to have a shooting opportunity. And so I think that helps him uh, to that end. And then, um, you know, I've encouraged him to be aggressive offensively. So that doesn't make it go in, but it maybe makes him feel better about himself. And I think that makes it go in. <clears throat> Obviously, the game comes down to the wire. Just how would you evaluate your perform or your guys' performance on executing in those late game situations? Pretty good. I think it was pretty good. I mean, it's it, there's still we had some young guys out there at the time, um, and so like I had said something out of the timeout, and then they're at the free throw line, and and then like one of the guys, one of the young guys, looked over to me, and I said something. And he was like, it was like the first time he heard what I said. Uh, so I think overall we did a pretty good job. We, that foul or no foul, we have practiced it. Uh, you have to practice it. You can't go in the game and tell a guy, hey, when he does it, just foul him at this point. We practiced that. And so for that to happen in the first game is, uh, was kind of neat for them to be in that situation. But they, they, they executed that really well. And right while everyone was probably upset that, that – the official that called it called it because he was on the opposite baseline, and I'm sure I heard the fans and everybody's like, "How how you how can you call that right?" And they said because he missed it. Had it gone in, they would have been very happy. I cal we calculated that that's what we were going to do. So when he made the foul call, we had, we did foul him. We fouled him, and it was seven tenths of the, left on the clock. And I, I thought we did a good job of executing that. Um, and just in general, I think we got open. Um, you know, GG. Uh, they called the one jump ball, but Gigi had to sprint back to the ball, get open, jump stop, chin it, and pivot, and try to get fouled in that situation. He did a good job coming back to that. He's never been in that scenario. Um, 
particularly not to win an SEC game. So there were so many things that were just great for our guys learning. But to answer your question, I thought we did a pretty good job uh, overall of executing what we wanted to do defensively at the end. All right, appreciate it, Coach. Thanks, guys.